to the book of Jude. J-U-D-E, the book of Jude. That comes right before the book of the Revelation. So flip all the way to the back of your Bible and then make a left. Jude, Jude, J-U-D-E. Making a way, watch this. Jew, 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 J U D. We're going to go to verse 24. Jew, verse 24. Amen. Jew, verse 24. Hallelujah. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, musicians. Stay with me. Jew 24, Jew 24, Jew 24. You don't think he's making a way. Look at the Bible. When you have it, say, Ooh, there it is. Y'all see it? Yeah. Word of God read this way. Now unto him. That was enough for some of y'all. Let me do it again. Now unto him. That is able. That should have been for the other. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. There it is with exceeding joy. To him, to the only wise God our sin. Be glory, be majesty, dominion, and power both now. And forevermore. Let's connect the dots. Flip, if you will, over to the book of Ephesians. Over to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. You know, sometimes things are so nice, you got to say them twice. Ephesians chapter 3, you there? Look at verse 20. Look at verse 20. You thought that one was good. You thought Jude was good. Look at Ephesians. Now unto him. That was half the room. Now unto him. That is it. To do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. The Bible says in verse 21, unto him be glory in the church. Okay, let me help you out. You in the church. Unto him be glory in the church. By Christ Jesus, through all ages, world without end. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now unto him. Father God, we thank you for being a way maker. God, we thank you that when we didn't know you, God, we thank you that while we were trying to figure it out, you had already worked it out. God, we thank you that when we rose this morning, we didn't have no doubt. We thank you now, God, for bringing us safely to this place. God, we thank you for this sacred, sanctified time in this sanctuary. God, I Ask now that you would connect my head and my heart, God, and knit together my mouth and my mind, God, that I would say what you won't say to God. Give me just enough sense to say it the way you want it said, God. When you are done speaking, I will take my seat, God. I stand before you now, an empty vessel, but I know that you are a full fountain, God, and I need you. Can't do anything without you, God. Won't you speak? Declare your word, God, that we can leave this place and understand that trouble don't last always. God, we got some trials and tribulations just over the hill, just around the corner, God, and we need to know that you are in complete control, God. So we thank you now for this moment. God, I ask that you would have your way. I've done as you can. God, I studied and prayed and prayed and studied, and now I stand nervous before your people, God, but I know that you're here. So have your way, God, and use me now. Send your word out, God, that it would not return unto you, Lord. Use your servant now, God, until you use me. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hold up your Bibles all over the sanctuary as we are accustomed here in New Life. We just like for you to know, and everybody watching via the internet, that I am, because it says I am. I can. I, I, will, I will. Because it says I will. Thanks be to God that I have new life. Somebody say, To God be the glory. You got to say, like, you got to say it with an exclamation point on the end of it. Say, To God be the glory. All glory belongs to him. To God be the glory. Not to you, not to mama them, but to God be the glory. 
uh, Sadducees and the Pharisees, y'all know the, the, the mean people that, that didn't like uh, uh, Jesus, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the devil, uh, the haters. Anybody other than me, you, you got some haters in your life, the haters, and, and, and they came for him, and they thought they had him. Yeah, right. and, uh, but, but I heard somebody say just yesterday, Jesus came back and said, cancel the funeral. I decided to live. Come on, that, that should have got half of y'all. Cancel the funeral. I, oh, they were looking for a funeral. Y'all know how they do. They was calling Pipkin. Talking about Kirk, you know, sending over the cars. And everybody had to prepare some chicken. And they were going back to the, to the repast and going to drink some red Kool-Aid. You know how it goes down. But Jesus said, cancel the funeral. I decided. I ain't done yet. Cancel the funeral. I decided to live. The Sadducees, the Pharisees, the devils, they, 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 they thought that they had him. But Jesus had some more work to do. So when he said, cancel that uh, repass, uh, I decided to live. Uh, watch this. Because God has shown you favor. Because he has shown you favor. Um, the saints of old used to say it like this. This morning when I rose, I didn't have no doubt. They used to say, uh, you woke up this morning and he uh, started you on your Okay, y'all know them old folks. Started you on your way. Because uh, this morning, God, God gave you the activity of your limbs because God has given you a roof over your head. I'm almost done. Because he has given you shoes on your feet. The saints of old used to say that, that he's given me everything that I needed. And because he's done that, the Bible says, uh, watch this, that his mercies are new every morning. You know how I know his mercies are new every morning and you ought to be grateful for it because just because it's sunny, you need some new mercies. You know why you need new mercies? Because you got some new mess. And if we got new mess, uh, then we sure enough need uh, some new, some some new, some new, some new uh, mercy. So he, he says, because out of all of this, you you ought to be able to uh, give God glory because of what he's done. Because of all that he's brought you out of, you ought to be able to give God glory. Because he, he woke you up and because he's feeding you and because he is Jehovah Jireh, we ought to be able to give God glory. Uh, the Bible says that he will never leave you nor forsake you. And because if he's going to do that for you, then, then we have to figure out a way to, to pay him back. We ought to figure out a way to give God glory. After all, watch this, watch this. You have not given any thought just today about inhaling and exhaling. Right, right, right. You just take for granted that you have breath. You just take for granted that you have air. But, but don't you know that God is so God that if he decides that the next breath is not to be, you got to check out, right? So you ought to thank God that you're able to inhale and exhale. And if he's going to do that for you, then you might as well give him glory. Uh, you have not uh, given any thought when you got up this morning, or some of y'all had, had more than one or two suits that you could decide on. Some of y'all, Sister Purchase, had more than one pair of shoes uh, that, 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 that you could decide on, and, and, and some of y'all had uh, more than, than one purple bow tie to decide on. But if God is going to bless us like that, the least we can do is give him glory. To God, to God, to God. The Bible says to God be the glory. So, so let me help us before we go any further. Um, uh, um, however you express your thanks to God, I'm going to give you 10 seconds just to give him glory. Oh, your glory, y'all, and that's what he's done for you. You ought to thank him. I'm not thanking you for the stuff that's not done yet. It's like, I know it's not open yet, but it's going to be open. And you ought to thank it like it's there. It is. I see you, Brother Anderson. You ought to thank it like it's already done. It's, I know it's not open yet. You ain't got to check in. The job ain't secure yet. Your woman ain't come yet. Your man ain't showed up yet. But you ought to thank God like it's already. The Bible says that glory belongs to him. That between Jude 24 and Ephesians 3, allow me to connect the dots and I'm going to take my seat. Ephesians 3 says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him. Be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages without end. And then it ends with amen. In other words, the amen comes because it says, I agree. I understand what was just set before me, and I agree that it is true. So if you agree that now unto him, 
who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that you can ask or think. We're almost there. According to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages without end. And you all are saved. Amen. Amen. If you agree with now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly, then you ought to say, if you agree with what the Bible says, then you ought to say, Paul, Paul is writing here to us. Paul is writing here to the church in Ephesus, and he says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding and abundantly of all that we can ask or think. Uh, he helps us understand that when we pray, we have to pray, saints, with expectance. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, 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 let me help you with, with what Paul has done here. The reason uh, Paul leaves us an example of praying with expectancy is, uh, so let me just say it the way I feel it. If you don't believe that God can do it, don't bother him. Because you've taken up some time, he can be blessing me, right? But, but if you're going to go down on your knees, then here is your pastor's suggestion. Before you get up off your knees, you ought to believe that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all of you. So if that's the case, then Paul says, then uh, to him, to that God, yeah. be glory. Yeah. Uh, all the glory belongs to him. I know you thought it belongs to you because you got you a new lace front, but um, all of the glory, because nobody wear no lace front today, all the glory belongs to him. I know you thought that, that you deserved it because you got uh, some new teeth. But all of the glory belongs to to him, uh, 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 th that boo might be new to you, but that was somebody else's boo for it was your boo. But even if you got a new boo, all glory belongs to him. We have to be careful that we don't give glory, God's glory, to somebody else. He's the only one that woke you up this morning. Now, he's the only one that started you on your way. So all glory belongs to him. When we pray, believing that God can uh, do what God is able to do, Paul starts praying in this uh, latter part of Ephesians. Paul starts praying, but before he gets off his knees, before he closes his prayer, before he says amen, he decides to go ahead and give God glory. Uh, we, we should serve God in the same way. Watch this. We should serve God with expectancy. In other words, you should not have just come to church today because it's Resurrection Sunday. But you should have came expecting God to answer your prayer. Uh, you should come expecting that God's going to give you exactly what you asked for if it's in his will. We should serve God to bring him glory. We should serve God because he is a merciful God. Let me help you with mercy. What you should have got what you deserve, you didn't get. It. So you owe God glory. You know why? Because of his mercy. And if that's not good enough, the Bible says that, that his grace and the mercy shall follow me, right? right? If, if he could have stopped at grace. But because he's so good and he's so God, he gave grace and mercy. I'm so glad you read your Bible. Grace and mercy. But most of all, we should serve God just because he is God. Yes, yes, yes. I know you're saying, I, I, I know you're saying, I thought about this one. When the Lord gave me this message, uh, what does that have to do with the resurrection? I know, I know, that's what you were saying in your head. Nobody heard you but me and the Lord. That's what you were saying. But, but if you know <laughs> that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think, then he is the resurrection. Uh, you just missed your first shout. There it is right there. Uh, uh, since you're looking for a resurrection message, let me give it to you. He is the reason for the season. Uh, he is the reason that we are here. Paul says when you pray, pray with expectancy. And before you finish that prayer, you ought to seal that prayer with a praise. Y'all didn't know that. Prayer and praise go together. Prayer and praise go together. In other words, if you're going to pray, then you got to learn how to praise. Okay, we, we almost there. Let me back up and get the slow folks. Now for the real, uh, 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 watch this, watch, watch, watch this. Pray with, with expectancy. Seal it uh, 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 with a praise. Seal it with, uh, uh, before you're done praying, is it seal it like this. To God, yeah. be the glory. Yeah. Or seal it like this. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Or seal it like this. Thank you, Jesus. That, that's the way you seal it, right? You just got to put your stamp of approval on it. Uh, uh, that's you saying, I know God is able to do uh, exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or ask or think. Here it is. Every time we go before God, you ought to expect the great. Yes. Right. You serve a great God, and our great God is able to do some great things. Yes. Paul says, God is able. Yes. Yes. All right, I missed you. Let me back up and get you. For the real saints, for the real saints, this ain't for everybody, just for the real saints, for the radical Jesus praises, for the people in the house that have been through anything, Paul could have stopped with God is able. All right, we, 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 are, we almost there. Paul could have stopped with God is able. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me get you close. 
God is able. All right, let me back up and get some other folks. Whatever it is you stand in need of, okay, we almost there. Whatever it is you can think, whatever it is you ask him for, all right, so I'm going to back up and get you where Paul is. Paul could have stopped with God is. Uh, that, that's, where the, that, that, that's where the real praise goes now. Uh, he could have stopped there, but because uh, he knows who we are, Paul, Paul could have stopped uh, for me and for you when God is able. But, but because uh, if you know that you serve a God that is able, we can shout at the end of able. Amen. Right? But, but he got some more. I, I, I know. Uh, if you know that God is able to do it, that is enough for us. But, but I know uh, uh, that, 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 that we need just a little bit more. So here, here is what we need. There is a difference between praise and a yet praise. Okay. A praise is, thank you God for doing that. I sure appreciate you. Much obliged. But a yet praise, let me get you closer. In other words, it ain't happened, but you owe God a praise. Uh, she ain't come through, but you owe God a praise. He ain't done it for you. But you owe God a praise. So let's do this. I know he ain't done it yet. But go ahead. I see you, brother. That's why. Go ahead and praise God like it's already. Oh, you owe him a yet praise. Remember what he did for you last week? You owe him a praise for that. Remember in 2016, you owe him. Okay, let's just call it roll. Remember in 2009, in January of 2000, you owe God a praise. I'm, you almost there. Uh, in 2010, in February, you owe God a praise. 2011. You owe, you act like you don't owe God nothing. In 2012, you owe God a praise. Let me get you closer. The bullet was supposed to kill you. Okay, there it is. You owe God a praise. The accident should have taken you out. You owe God a praise. The cancer should have killed you. Whoever you are, you owe God a praise. Your child almost died. But you got a yet praise. You know why? Because he's a yet kind of God. I know it ain't over. But you owe God a praise. I know it's not done, but you owe God. Come on now, you owe God a praise. It is Resurrection Sunday. And since you got up and dusted off your hat and got your suit out of the cleaners and bought you some new shoes, you might as well give God praise. You might as well tell, open up your mouth and tell God, thank you. Oh, you got to thank you like he's really done. The Bible says, give God glory. You don't have the job yet, but God is able. I know you don't have the wife yet, but God is able. I know your husband ain't come yet, but God is able. I know your children ain't saved yet, but God is able. I know your bank account ain't full yet, but God is able. Paul says that he's able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can think or ask. I don't know about you, but I'm thinking some big things. I'm asking God for some big things. So I need a God that can deliver me from myself. I need a God that can save my children. I need a God that can heal my body. I serve a big God, and if you serve a big God, you ought to tell him thank you. The Bible says to God be the glory. 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 Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch the text. The text is moving. We're going to move with the text. If you didn't tear it out, it's still there in your Bible. Paul says, uh, now that you know who this God is, uh, Paul says unto him. He didn't even use his name. You know why? Because he said, I'm talking to some seasoned folks now. I'm talking to one or two people that have been through something. So Paul says, all I got to do now is say him. Uh, so here we go. Uh, this, this is how Paul did it. Paul says, now unto him. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so now that you know who him is, uh, some of y'all might not. So, so, so let me just call the roll. Who is him? Him is the God that can do exceeding. Okay, you halfway there. Uh, him is the God that can do abundantly. Uh, Paul says, unto him, that, that, that God, unto that God, uh, we ought to give him glory. To, to that God, and this is the God that says, I can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. To that God, he says, uh, be glory. And, and then he goes on to say, there should be glory in the church. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so watch this. Since, since you came all the way to 4800 Telluride Street in Denver, Colorado, uh, at, at, at the New Life Church, then uh, we we actually in the church. You got that? Yeah. So he says, we ought to give God glory. I thought you knew. We ought to give God glory. And since you in the church, you ought to. There it is right there. I, I ain't telling you nothing that you don't already know. The Bible says to God be 
the glory. The Bible says that, that we ought to give God glory. Paul says, uh, now that you know, watch this, Paul paints it like this. Now that you know who we're talking about. He's the one that woke you up this morning. He's the one that started you on your way. He's the one that, 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 that gave you a roof over your head. He's the one that, that you're not outside uh, uh, sleeping on the sidewalk. He is the one that, 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 that healed your body. He is the one that has helped you in your career. He is the one uh, that gives you the activity of your limbs. He is the one that allows you to speak with no help. He is the one that allows you, we almost there, that let you walk in this morning. Uh, most of us didn't need no help. Uh, the Bible says to that God. Ought to be glory. Uh, you you mean you mean that God that can do all things well? Yeah 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 yeah. To that God, to, to, to that God be glory. Uh, that God. You you mean to the God who who saved me? Yeah yeah. yeah. To, to to that God uh, 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 be the glory. You you mean the God who restored my eyesight? Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. To, to that to, to that God be to, to be be the glory. You mean to to the God that gave me the job that I didn't even apply for? Yeah yeah yeah. To to to. To that God, to, to, to that God be the glory. You, you mean to, to, to the God that allowed me to go nine months and, and deliver a healthy baby boy and a healthy baby to that? Yeah, 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 yeah. To that, to, 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 to that God be, 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 be the glory. So, so whatever it is that, that he has done for you, I'm talking about him. To that God. To that God. However he delivered you, to that God. How, however he saved you, to that God. How, however he helped you, to that God. Ulysses got it. Uh, however he's done what he's done for you, to that God. We ought to give him glory. Uh, you mean to, to the God that delivered me? Yes, that, that God. That, the God who gives me peace when all hell is... is breaking. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. To, to, to that God. To, uh, to, to that God. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to take my seat. Now that you've been notified... Now that I've informed you about who this God is, the Bible says that he's able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that we can think or ask. To that God, we talk about him delivering and to, to him saving and to him sanctifying and to him set free. I'm almost done. And now since you know who Paul is talking about, Paul says unto that God, you ought to give him glory while you're in the church. Paul says unto him, be glory in the church. Well, since we in the church. And since you are the church, since we came all this way, I didn't come to look at you, and I know you didn't come to look at me. We showed up on resurrection morning to give God glory. Now here it is, and I'm just going to separate the room. There's going to be half of y'all that's going to get it, the other half they ain't going to get it. I'm just talking to the folks that God has done something for. That, that, that's it, I'm going to take my seat. Now he ain't done nothing for you, you ain't got nothing to say. This is the part of the service. God has not blessed you. This is the part of the service where you can be quiet. This is the part of the service where you can make your exit. I'm only talking to the people that God has been good to. I'm only talking to the people that know that God deserves the glory. I'm not talking about if you think that your food deserves the glory, then you give it to them. Or if you think that your boss deserves the glory, then you give it to them. I'm only talking to the people that understand. To God be the glory. Uh, so stay right there. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Okay. The Bible doesn't say the redeemed of the Lord ought to look so. The Bible doesn't say that the redeemed of the Lord ought to clap pretty. The Bible didn't say that the redeemed of the Lord ought to dance. The Bible said that the redeemed of the Lord say so. So if you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, then you owe God to glory to Him. To that God. The God that saved you, you owe Him glory. The God that delivered you, you owe him glory. I know you didn't come to church to look at me, so we came to give God glory, isn't that right? So you ought to open up your mouth, clap your hands, dance in your feet, run around to whatever it is you need to do, when you owe God. The Bible says, give God glory. Come on, say it with me. Unto him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. So if you don't get nothing else, you came to resurrection service to find out that because he got up, you owe him glory. So let me help you. You said unto him, who is him? Let me help you. Him wore a crown of thorns for you. Him went to the cross for you. Him died on the cross for you. Him shed his blood for you. Let me help you. That ought not to be the most exciting part. Because Jesus was the only one that died. A whole bunch of folks died. His blood wasn't the only blood that was shed. A whole bunch of folks shed some blood. But here's the exciting part. 
a whole bunch of folks died. But he's the only one. A whole bunch of folks died. But he's the only one that got up. A whole bunch of folks shed their blood. But his blood is the only blood that can save you. His blood is the only blood that can save me. So don't just get excited because he died. Don't just get excited because of the blood. You ought to get excited because he was there on Friday. Old preachers used to say it like this. He was there all day Saturday. But then y'all know what happened. What happened? Early Sunday morning, he got up. So he got up. The Bible says unto him, who is him? Him is who got up. That's all I got for you. Him is who got up. So because he got up, you ought to give him glory. Come on, clap your hands. Tell God thank you. And give him glory. No, no, you got to give him glory like you glad he got up. You got to give him glory like you know. Had it not been for the Lord who was on your side. Or you got to give him glory like you know. If he hadn't turned you around, in hell you would have lifted up your eyes. But because he gave you another chance, because he allowed us to use her, you ought to give him glory. Look at your neighbor. I don't want you to leave and not have said anything all morning. Look at your neighbor and say, girl, you ought to give him glory. Look at your other neighbor and say, man, you ought to give him glory. Uh, tell me, why are you looking at me? You ought to give him glory. You don't know how to clap your hands. You ain't got no dance in your feet. 